Hello everyone, this is Robot Uprising from Conquer Fear Gaming, and welcome to the second installment of the Minecraft Redstone series. We're going to be focusing on five simple and easy redstone landmine designs to turn friends into ex-friends. And the reason I uh, even made this video, I was actually having some fun on MLG LOL 80's video, Five Simple Redstone Traps, and I could not figure out how to make those redstone minecarts, uh, or TNT minecarts rather, explode instantly. Just couldn't figure it out, so I wanted to do a design with a little bit of a different material that I think is a lot more effective. So let's go ahead and um, drop down into survival and we can get started with these five designs. Now the first one is very simple. It's a jump scare landmine. This is probably the tamest of the bunch. It's definitely the tamest of the bunch. You can use this in your world without really worrying about um, you know, your friends hating you because they're not going to die. See, I didn't die. I'm not even wearing any armor. Just lost a couple hearts, but definitely took me by surprise if I'm not expecting to get blown up right there. Um, one way to, you know, give your friends a little bit of a, uh, a shock early in the morning there. So that was the jump scare landmine, number one. Number two, the impending doom landmine. Why is it named the impending doom landmine? Well, in movies and TV shows, there's often that moment where a character knows they're going to die and they have this this whole revelation. It, it can be a great instance for the audience to connect with them as a character. Maybe they come to some realization. Uh, but it, it's a very emotional moment, and you can kind of give that to your friends. So if you're if you're a fan of giving your friends emotional trauma, this is, uh, this is the mine for you. The impending doom landmine, where all of a sudden you find yourself in a hole staring at a TNT block that is about to explode in your face. So that's one way to do it. Now, I probably could have got away from that if I wanted to. It was just one TNT. I could have just ran in the other direction. So you can always add add the ante a little bit. In this case, uh, number 2A, impending doom landmine with extra doom. What does that mean? Well, okay, uh, that did not wait four seconds. That's for sure. But in this case, I used four instead of the one. Uh, that one was definitely a little bit more evil because I think you have a, definitely have a chance of your gear being blown up by the other TNT. So, a little bit meaner, um, you know, use with caution. Let's go ahead and move on to number three, which is the Eternal Fall landmine. What could that possibly be? Oh, and here I am. Now, if you're lucky, you might land on that piece of obsidian. That's where the, uh, that's where the end crystal is going to be. If you're not lucky, you're going to fall forever. Now you can see, of course, I did this. I don't. How did I just die? Um, that was interesting. But you can see that I used a bunch of cobwebs because I'm in creative mode. That's totally fine. You might not use any cobwebs at all. You might use one layer if you go to a abandoned mine with like a silk touch or uh, shears. Be able to get some of those to use. But you can drop people, maybe you even know how to break bedrock, and you can drop people through the void, maybe you want to drop them into lava, into water if you're nicer, maybe it's slime blocks, maybe it's uh, hay bales or beds or whatever you'd like. You can drop people into a big hole, basically you just mine out the area and then you just leave one layer of dirt above that, and that's the eternal fall landmine. Now we have number four, the lava landmine, probably my favorite, but it's definitely one of the most evil of the bunch because all of a sudden... You are just, oh, all of a sudden, you are in a pool of lava, and that is hard to get out. Now, you probably uh, can piece this together. I wonder where this trap would be even more deadly. That's right, the nether. That would be completely evil with lava flowing as fast as water, but you can see that with the setup that I used, I used eight different buckets of lava. This is completely filled. Anyone who's in the middle of that, you have a split second you can possibly get out, but definitely evil because if your friends don't have netherite gear, they're going to lose everything. Great way to get banned from the server or even the friend group, depending on how uh, much of a prol prolific offender you are using this landmine. Landmine number five, the instant death landmine. Again, very evil. Probably don't want to do this, pop this on your friends uh, in an unsuspecting manner because they are not going to be pleased. 
Now, you probably are noticing as well, this redstone ore is very conspicuous. No one's going to walk over that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can go over how to hide these coming up next. But let's just demonstrate the instant death. Oh, that's, that's quick. You may even say instant. Very, very evil to just have those laying around. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into creative mode. And this way we can grab everything that's in here. This is what we use to make the, uh, the landmines. And so let's pop on over. This is exactly what the design looks like. It's very simple and easy. It's just like five components. And the reason it works is because redstone ore lights up when you interact with it. So uh, if you walk over it, it lights up. If you mine next to it, which is probably what you're familiar with, you notice that it lights up. That's a block update, which can be detected by the observer. So we've got an observer looking at the redstone ore and powering this dispenser. So when you walk over it, it updates the block. It shoots this snowball, can be any projectile. If you prefer arrows, you prefer something else, eggs even. Uh, it just shoots it into this very, very fragile and very explosive end crystal, which is, you know, you might recognize this, typically used to, um, you have to destroy these to kill the ender dragon. You can also use them to respawn the ender dragon, but it's still something you can access in survival just with obsidian, glass, an eye of ender, and a ghast tear. Just notice they also they always have to be placed on obsidian. So it's just those five components. You get the the ore, the observer, the dispenser, the the obsidian, the end crystal. I suppose six components if you count whatever projectile it is. Very very simple to make one. So I just dig out two by four by one. I want to put this redstone ore up top. I want to have the observer facing up, but I don't want to interact with the blocks. So I'm going to actually press on the dirt. Then I'm going to put a dispenser there. I'm going to fill it with a, a single projectile. I'm going to put a piece of obsidian, put the end crystal, and then I'm finished. If you want to hide it, just make sure, again, you do not touch the redstone. You want to touch the carpet next to it. You can still kind of see that, of course. But I remember I said we would, we would talk about how to actually hide these. You might want to do something like this, where you've kind of got like a minefield set up. Um, so this... If you're a builder that likes to do like textured landscapes, maybe you even use a carpet like this and that way you can even hide this more effectively than most. But this is still a safe way to like have fun with explosives because no one is going to come over here and be like, oh yeah, there's definitely nothing in this area. It's kind of obvious, especially if you've told your friends ahead of time that you're messing around with landmines. So you can do something like this. Maybe you've got like a war-torn area of your world and there, there's a minefield that never got cleared out. Just a little way for you to have some fun. And that's how you set it off. So let's go ahead and go to that last, last area over here. Um, this is an even more sinister setup because if you incorporate the landmine into a build that's already using carpets in a way that's natural, then you're just super evil. So we've got this house, just built this nice little house here. I love dark oak and oak, uh, it goes well together. So we've got just a nice little map house. This is very similar to some that you'll see like naturally spawn in villages. So um, yeah, we're, we're kind of looting. We, maybe we want to look at the chest, we look at the, oh, trying to use the cartography table and it just blows you to bits. So that's one way you can definitely um, you know, catch your friends by surprise. If you're playing in a server where you're just going at it with almost no restrictions, that's going to be fun. It's going to be a great deal of fun to just blow each other up. So if you're wondering how you can do a minefield and keep them without blowing each other up, this is what you would need to do. If you want to do like a linear grid sort of style, it's 12 blocks in between. Um, so let me just grab obsidian as well as and end crystal. So if I blow this up, nothing else blows up. Even if I blow up this middle one, nothing else will blow up. But if I just place it one block closer, now it's closer to that one and that one, now they all blow up. So it's 12 blocks exactly um, if you're going to go in like a linear fashion. But if you want to kind of have them spread out diagonally, you kind of got this like hourglass figure going on. So it is still 12 between for these ones that are straight. And then for the ones that are diagonal, you wanna go one, two, three, four, five, six. 
and then one, two, three, four, and the fifth block can be obsidian. Both of these work, not those ones. But both of these ones work. You can see if I if I do these ones, that doesn't blow up, that doesn't blow up, that doesn't blow up, none of these blow up. But if I go in any direction, like this one, both of those two blow up. If I go in this direction, that those ones blow up. And if I go in this direction, oops, that one blows up and that one. So they have to be exactly this distance apart to keep each other from blowing up. Um, what you'll also want to take into consideration is if you're doing the lethal landmine, the instant death. So that one uses two of these and I typically have them like, you know, a block apart, kind of like this with the dispenser in the middle shooting at one of them. Um, so in this case, you just want to make sure that the outermost one is 12 away from the outermost one of the other. However, if you want your whole field to blow up at once, then make them closer. Um, you know, that's if that's what you want to do, totally fine. That has been our tutorial on landmines. Five really, really simple ideas. Um, some nice traps, very, very simple. Six redstone components, or just six components in general, including the projectile to ignite them. Um, hopefully you have a lot of fun with these. You can definitely make them in survival. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna be doing more of these redstone contraptions in the days and weeks to come. So if you like them, definitely subscribe and we'll, uh, we'll keep those videos going and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in the next one.